You ever notice how many movies revolve around people, usually Americans, traveling to another country only to be victimized by the locals? Human Centipede, Hostel, The Green Inferno, Tusk, of course this is to make it scary, isolate our victims from the familiar and everything else becomes potential danger. It's harder to get away when the locals are so different, you lose a sense of who to trust and who to not trust. Especially when everyone is so welcoming. It's disarming. Spiders don't use welcome mats, so this seems legit. Of course, things like this are fictional. We hope. We want easily identifiable villains, and we want them now. What's easier than vilifying an entire country or group? This is Midsummer. <sighs> Screen cap now if you want to use any of these shots as your background. Aren't they just gorgeous? I feel like I'm in an ad for a peppermint patty scented summer's eve. Yeah. Oh, damn it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, wait, that's the movie. Danny, played by Florence Pew? Puh? Puh? Pew? Puh? Is she part Klingon? She's calling her parents to warn them about her sister, Terry, behaving strangely leaving cryptic messages, and she's worried she might do something crazy. Her family seems to be ghosting her, so she calls Christian her boyfriend. How's the baggage? I mean, how's your sister? Maybe it's just another cry for attention. And I lean on him constantly for support. Like, what if I have overwhelmed him and- You mean, like the way you're calling me with your problems right this second? Christian, her boyfriend, is played by Jack Rayner and not a budget Chris Pratt. He wants out of the relationship, but he just can't bring himself to break it off with Danny. Emotional baggage, line one. Hey. Alright, there's good news, and there's bad news. The good news, her family isn't ghosting her, and this was indeed a cry for attention from her sister. The bad news, that cry for attention involved gassing her entire family with carbon monoxide. Oh, not looking forward to this, not looking forward to this. Just follow the wailing. I guess we're not breaking up tonight. <laughs> or for a while. She finds out her boo was planning a trip to Sweden with his bros. He really wants to go, but thinks Danny won't be okay with it. She tells him, Wait, honey, fix your shirt. That's really bugging me. Thank you. But she's okay with it. Especially if it's going to help with his thesis on the mating habits of Swedish women. Out of guilt, Christian invites Danny along, knowing that she'll back out. But their good Swedish buddy Pele, played by Wilhelm Blomgren, yeah, I think I got that right, convinces her to come. There will be drugs. I'm in. Way to cramp our style, bro. This is the roomiest airplane bathroom I've ever seen. You could have a mile high orgy up in here and still have access to the sink to wash off your bits. I thought we were going to Sweden, not Australia. We have time to meet some of the locals. They also meet another couple from out of town, Simon and Connie, who are also visiting from abroad. And here to eat psychedelic mushrooms with strangers. I don't feel anything. Okay, now it's kicking in. Be cool, there are narcs everywhere. The NSA's listening in on me. Epstein didn't kill himself. 9-11 was an inside job. We're inside the looking glass, people! There are bugs on me. They finally make it to the commune where the roofing contractors are good enough. Welcome victims for the Midsummer Festival. Thanks, and victims is Swedish for... They seem friendly enough, but I see one wicker man, I'm out. For every person you see dressed in white, take a shot. Spring break! Isabel Grill is Maya, and she's got her eye on who she probably thinks is Chris Pratt. Look out, it followed you to Sweden! That means she likes you. But if she pulls your pigtails, she's really serious. Happy birthday. Ah, that looks nothing like me. Have you looked at me lately? What's that building over there? Oh, that's just the local Illuminati field office. And here's where we keep our bears. And here's where we hang our foreshadowing to dry in the sunshine. Wait, what, what, what is this? Girl likes a guy, 
So to make him fall in love with her, feeds him some pubic hair and menstrual blood? Huh? I guess Axe Body Spray works in a similar fashion. Here's where you'll be staying, in the barn with 80 other people. Do you have what it takes to be cultist of the month? This is their version of Tai Chi with more crying. Finally, the guests of honor. We've been standing here for hours, guys. It's always awkward when the grandparents are arguing. On to the ceremony. The elders are taken up to the top of a nearby cliff. But it's not to throw beads at the kids below. Come on, superhero landing, it'll be awesome! Oh my god! It's like Gallagher, but the watermelons sledgehammer themselves. Grandpa's turn, but he... he misses. Even falling to his doom, he needs directions. Something this bunch does, when one of their own is suffering, they all mimic their cries of despair, seemingly to share and suffer with them. It looks more mocking than anything, but if that's how they roll, that's how they roll. Ah, uh, yes, I'm totally suffering with you, dude. Ah, eesh. Ah. <laughs> I, you thought I was done with the Gallagher references. So, do we all get turns, or what? The outsiders are, of course, horrified at this. Intolerant tourists, go run from a bull. Christian decides to do his thesis on this commune, which Josh is already working on. He just wants to copy your notes. This seems like an odd thing to fight about. I'm just waiting for them to start slapping each other. Maya's busy working her voodoo on Christian. Sure, now she's slipping runes under his bed. You know what this is building to. Edible arrangement would be fine. Mark, played by Will Poulter, alienates himself from everyone by urinating on a sacred tree. You know, a bit of warning, a velvet rope would have been nice, or at least a sign, do not piss here. Simon and Connie leave and don't come back. I don't know why I quoted that last part. Here, slap on an apron. Wash your hands when we're done. It also looks like Maya is preparing her <clears throat> pie for Christian. Mark tries to get some by cashing in on his bad boy image. Hi. Pete on your special tree. And Christian gets his pie. And notice his drink is a little more... cherry flavored? Look, 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 he's gonna eat it, he's gonna eat it. Look, look, don't stare. Look, 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 look. Oh, he's gonna eat it. Oh, you owe me a dollar. After these messages, uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> See what happens when you don't tip? with a bloody Maya to wash it down. Come, we fool around. You get, how you say, bludgeoned? What does bludgeon mean in Swedish? Josh decides to do some sneaky research for his thesis. That is a nerdy statement. But he's interrupted by someone wearing Mark's face like a mask. That mallet gets a lot of use. Danny gets into a dance contest while Christian is sent to the principal's hut. This is Maya's mother, and she approves of Christian's penis. You have been approved to mate with her. I think I ate one of her pubic hairs. <laughs> yeah, that's what got her fired from Arby's. Danny hallucinates yet again. What was in that tea? She doesn't want people to know what's growing in her groin. Full hedge base. This dance marathon is a killer, but Danny's doing pretty well. It's full contact dancing. And will you stop drinking everything someone hands you? Danny's even learned Swedish somehow. The Swedish have <laughs> this psychs out her opponents and she wins the dance off. Yay! She's the new May Queen! Boo! Foreigners are taking our jobs. See how silly that sounds? The imagery itself breathes, pulsates. Probably a product of all the psychedelic substance use, but it also makes everything uncomfortable, uneasy. You start questioning your own eyes. And she's getting into it now. One minute she's sitting at a table, the next minute she's poison ivy. Then a carriage ride through Dealey Plaza for the customary planting of the steak and egg tree. Those waffle bushes should be ready by harvest. What has Christian gotten himself into? I'm Spaghetti Man! Give me some candy! For your vitality. Vitality? Is that Viagra gas? Be honest. Be honest. Be honest. 
Maya is waiting along with her squad. Oh, there is so much to censor. Willie gets her and she's all like, come get some. Well, I didn't get dressed for nothing. So he starts going to work. This isn't uncomfortable at all because they start chanting. I would prefer Luther Vandross myself. When he gets tired, the squad helps out. It's like, come on, Mandalorian is on in five minutes. Uh-oh, he's about to be busted. He never did that with me. Eventually, he makes his deposit, which she happily accepts. Thank you, come again. <laughs> See, this is what you sound like. Knock it off. The deed done, Christian runs out buck-ass naked. I don't think they need to surprise him to drug him. They probably could have handed him the roofie and he would have taken it himself. Danny is crowned and dressed up as Pizza the Hut. Christian, now drugged into a stupor, as usual. I don't think Cheech and Chong get stoned this often. Nine people are to be sacrificed. Eight are already set, with the final one chosen by the May Queen herself. The choices are Christian and one of the locals. At first, the choice seems obvious. Then she remembers which one was throwing that dick around. The sacrifices are loaded into the Illuminati hut. It's like the back of spirit over here. Christian, for some reason, is sewn into a bear suit. It looks like a disguise that wouldn't fool Invader Zim. I'm a bear. Rawr. Nick Cage called. He wants his bear back. The two conscious volunteers are given a drug that's supposed to make everything painless. Hey, let me out of here. The ranger will hear about this. Well, here we go. Nice knowing you, man. Oh, wait. Fire hurts. What else were they lying about? Now you all remember what to do whenever anyone says a secret word, right? Oh, oh, oh. Bring me Solo and the Wookiee. Admit it, ladies. You all have a guy you'd love to set on fire. That was Midsummer. What the fuck? Marketed as a horror movie, it's actually a bit more complex than that. On the surface, you would expect a fish out of water, distrust other cultures type of story. When the characters are taken out one by one by crazy locals, like 10,000 Maniacs or Green Acres, actually this is a story about breaking up, splitting from a toxic relationship, and finding one's place. Pretty clean break, I mean there's no going back, is there? Danny is stripped of almost everything right at the start. The one thing she has left, Christian, she really doesn't have. She starts out rather meek, needy, and loaded with baggage. She's overly apologetic and eager to please, but by the end she's rebuilt from the ground up. A literal queen with a new place, a new family, and a newfound power. Everything they do is out of purpose, tradition, like a force of nature. The main characters are simply swept up in it. They dislike Danny, they rile the locals, make bad decisions, and ultimately pay the price. Danny's the only innocent. The soundtrack is hauntingly beautiful. It sets a tone that makes you uneasy, but it's not unpleasant. You feel like something terrible is about to happen. The visuals and the cinematography is just stunning. This movie is brilliantly shot. The entire movie is very dreamlike, the drug-induced weirdness might seem gimmicky, but it also makes you doubt your own eyes. There's some imagery hidden in the background, and some right up in your face. Okay, some of the elements might get a bit... silly. And it takes away some of the gravity of some scenes, but it also adds a unique twist. The acting is great. Everyone turns in believable and strong performances. It's not in-your-face scary, but it gets under your skin. The beautiful visuals and soundtrack lure you in before it hits you in the face with a pubic hair pie. There's also some parts that are, I think, unintentionally funny. Drugs and persuasive cults can have a similar effect to those receptive and vulnerable. Your perceptions are altered and reality can be distorted. Next thing you know, you're selling off your things. A lot is telegraphed and foreshadowed, so it's fairly predictable. There's more foreshadowing than John Holmes at a nude beach. All this talk of finding a new family to a girl without a family seems like a no-brainer. And in the end, Danny gets an odd happy ending. Midsummer is three Bs. From the director of Hereditary, it's a strange movie, but it's hard to look away. From an artistic view, the movie is amazing. It sets a tone that's ominous and welcoming at the same time. Story-wise, 
is a bit predictable with moments of insanity sprinkled in. It might induce some giggles, and that might take you out of the movie. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, the bell, you know, the usual YouTube stuff. This is the newbie, and I'll see you later, kids. Toodles.